What's up, everybody? It's Lexi D. Welcome back to Something to Consider. In this episode, I'm going to talk about ghosting, about feedback, just about that whole kind of situation that we can find ourselves in, whether that's through the lens of our careers or through the lens of dating. So let's go through the lens of dating because this is where it comes up a lot, this idea of of feedback and, and ghosting and that kind of stuff. In the realm of dating, what I have seen is that the fear that drives, that can drive people to ghost there is they don't want to They don't want to be on the receiving end of the person's response. From my own experience, when I've given feedback or rationales to why I've decided I don't want to have contact with someone, don't want to date them, it has not gone well. I remember even growing up and some guys would try to holler at you, that kind of thing. And you're like, nah, I'm good. And it's, you wasn't cute anyways. Like it just, sometimes people get really aggressive with it. And there was one guy who maybe a year or two ago, I remember, cause I've learned and I've, I've been trying to learn how to tailor how I present my feedback. I certainly don't want it to come across as like a, I think I'm better than you kind of thing. Cause that's not it. It's just a, this is not a good fit. And I want to be able to express that. That's usually my MO is to express things rather than just to act like this is nothing and to block the person or ghost them. Unless it's like some crazy circumstance where I feel like it's warranted, like this person has been really disrespectful, so I'm not going to talk to them. But if it's not something like that, and it's just like this person keeps trying to communicate and I'm just not feeling it, more times than not, I'm going to tell them, I'm going to share with them. And I'm maybe not going to go in all the gory details unless they ask me why. But even then, from my experience, when you do that, sometimes when people ask you why, it's their ego is hurt in that moment. So it becomes about them trying to challenge your thinking or, and or challenge your thinking as a way to justify that they did nothing wrong when really the person, when really being the person who's like, nah, this just isn't a good fit for me. I'm not necessarily telling you you're wrong. I'm just saying like, this is not the right situation for me. So there's a lot of ego, I think that's involved when it comes to, rejection because that's what we're talking about here in the situation with work and in the situation in dating we're talking about and when we're talking about ghosting we're talking about the quote-unquote proper way to reject someone and I've learned for myself that it's it's situational in general I would prefer to reject a situation or someone by being able to be forthcoming about where I'm at and using a lot of I statements of I would like this, I would prefer this, and what I'm noticing is A, B, C, D. But there are people who will not receive that. I I think it's safe to say in general, we as humans, we don't like, we don't like rejection. Our egos do not like rejection. We want to feel a part of things. We want to be told yes. Even sometimes when we logically know a situation is not a good situation, it still can suck to be rejected. I had recently had a situation like that where this guy, I had really good energy with him. Like we had a a brief moment together and it was just, oh my gosh, I had such a good time hanging around him and we were laughing and he asked for my number and he never used it. (laughs) And when I thought back to our conversations, our conversation, I was like, you know, there are certain things that actually might be, and this could be my ego trying to make a cop out. I don't know. But looking back to that conversation, like there were certain things that came up that might pose a problem long term. So maybe I should just instead be grateful that he didn't reach out versus him reaching out. And then those things formally come out as a problem. And then I got to be the one to tell him no. So I think this is, this is about, this started about ghosting and giving feedback, but really it's like about how to take rejection and also 
being able to navigate giving it. And as is the situation or as as is the case with probably every situation that deals with the human fragile ego, there is no way, no one way to do it. It's situational. It depends on the type of person you are. I feel like as a default, uh, I feel like as a default, if you really value that person, you value the interaction you had, saying something can be more appreciated than nothing. I've been on the other side where it really sucked, where someone who was important in my life decided to up and just block me. And I wasn't even aware that I was blocked. It was like, I had tried reaching out to them. I thought their phone was turned off because there had been nothing in my, from my point of view, that would have led to them blocking me. So I did not even consider that. And I remember reaching out to them via email because I was really concerned that something had happened. They're like, yeah, no, I just got to go. Like, we just can't be friends. And I was mortified by that. (laughs) It was really just like, you mean to tell me we've been friends for this long and you can't even give me some sort of explanation? Really? So it turned out that that's the type of person that he was. He definitely did that more than once with me. And that was a situation where I had to learn how to have boundaries so that that person could never enter my life again, because it was just too painful with him doing that and just having, and then starting to feel like I had to walk on eggshells because I didn't know what I didn't know what I was doing to cause him to react that way. And later on, it came out that it wasn't anything that I was doing. Like the, the reasons that he would choose to block me were all basically with him and not wanting to deal with his internal feelings and him even saying that himself of like, Oh, one time, like I had feelings for you and I was in a relationship with someone else and I didn't know how to deal with it. And like, I didn't even know he had feelings for me. Like it just, y'all people deal with (laughs) their feelings as a side note in all kinds of ways. And I think some of that can come about in this way of ghosting of if someone doesn't want to confront a situation, whether that's they don't want to confront it because that means confronting their own feelings and they're afraid of how they're going to respond or it's they don't want to confront the other person because they don't want to deal with that other person's feelings. I think it, I think ghosting can be at times, at times a cop out. It's easy. It's easy to avoid. It's easy to just like put your head in the sand. Now there's other times where I think it's wise and it could be more so for safety situations where you feel like you're in danger and you just need to get out of a situation from someone ghosting could make the most sense and would be probably the the best option for someone in that situation so I don't have a stance necessarily on ghosting that is a blanket blanket statement of ghosting is always a bad thing whether we're talking about in the career wor- world where there's that fear of being, I was going to say fired, or where is that, where is there, where there is that fear of being sued, or we're talking about in the dating world where there is that fear of backlash. In e- in either situation, we're talking about fear and we're talking about backlash in the situation of someone not being able to handle rejection. But what sucks about that is for the people who can handle rejection, they and can handle hearing and have the capacity to hear what that other person's opinion and thoughts are without having backlash, they now automatically just get left in the dark. They they become, it's not a consolation prize, but they just become as a part of, as a part of that decision to not give feedback, whether it's in the career or dating world. The people who have the capacity, who would have the capacity to receive that feedback and actually could use it, now don't receive it and just kind of have to walk blindly with everybody else because somebody else messed it up. (laughs) That's usually what happened, right? I'm, I'm going to guess that at some point, maybe, I don't know, maybe interviewers were giving candidates feedback and then there was enough lawsuits to be like you know what forget it we just not gonna do that in the world of dating 
someone has given enough feedback and had enough <laughs> enough backlash to be like, you know what, I'm not going to do that. Or I'm just going to text them and block them. It's so sad because, like I said, the people who do have the capacity for it now don't get to receive that. There's not even an option for them to receive that. So I think something to consider when we think about rejection, whether we're doing the rejecting or we're on the receiving end of it, when we're thinking about ghosting, feedback, all that kind of stuff is really to first not take any of it personal. I think that's one of the four agreements is to not take anything personal. I know this is easier said than done, but whenever I implement this in my life, I have such a grounded feeling and just a way of being able to be open around people because I know that whatever they're doing is a projection of themselves. And that doesn't mean I let my guard down and just let people do whatever they're going to do, but it means that I trust myself to have the boundaries in place that I need to, to, to interact in a healthy way with that person. And if they keep crossing them, we won't be interacting we being me, myself, and I won't be interacting with that person, right? So, and then also when it comes to rejecting people is like, instead of just taking what sometimes is the easy road, like I said, in some situations, I think ghosting is appropriate. But instead of taking, in the other cases, an easy road is considering what it could look like to give a healthy form of rejection. If you're in a relationship with someone, for instance, for two years and things have been great, it's just you're growing apart, ghosting that person, that's that's cruel. That's harsh. That is that is harsh. So considering if we're on the receiving end, that it's not personal, and considering if we are dishing that out, to also, if we are dishing out that rejection, to stick with the facts rather than kind of like our judgment of the facts that I have found to be helpful as well and just being gentle in our approach because it sucks being rejected even if it's not the right situation anyways and that other person has come to that conclusion or would it still sucks you're you're being told like when we when we're rejected what we're hearing is we're not good enough maybe a healed more healed mind is hearing this is not a right fit and I just need to to find the right fit for me. So with that, I want to thank you all for listening to this episode. And I'll speak to you in my next one.